Hello and welcome everybody to our podcast. We have back returning guest Rod Steele, who's going to be giving us his updates and musings on the wealth transfer as it relates specifically to the Iraqi dinar. Now, again, if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe and share so that it can help it grow and others gain the knowledge you've been afforded. Mr. Steele, thanks for joining us again. How are you doing this fine day? Good afternoon, John. Uh, well, it's TGIF, right? Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of good promising news on the home front with respect to Iraq, which we're going to touch on in a second. Um, I'm going to save my questions till the end on this one and just let you kind of navigate through what information you have, and then we'll work from there. Does that sound good? Hey, all right. Be happy to do that. Uh, cool. Well, folks, you know, I, I see you about once a month, so I try to do a little bit of a recap as to where we've transpired uh, since the last time we spoke. And that involves a number of, of key issues and activities, um, both good and not so good, that uh, we're, we're still dealing with deep state out there, guys. But I think we've got them under control at this point. Uh, let's just go take a look here. And recently, uh, we know that the Q clock ended on Tuesday the 21st, which was the same day that Klaus Schwab, founder and executive uh, chairman of the World Economic Forum, announced his decision to step down from the executive role. Uh, this move marked the end of an era for the WEF, the Cabal's global platform established in 1971 to engage the world's top leaders and to be in control of the world's global, regional, and industrial agendas. Uh, coinciding with Schwab's announcement, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, announced his plans to retire and the FDIC chairman was also stepping down. These developments alongside the introduction of the end of the Fed bill and the passage of the blockchain bill uh, signal a shift in global economic and financial systems back to the people. So we're having some key things that are being snuck in. Uh, they're not really making mainstream news, but nonetheless, they are happening. Um, Several countries were installing new leadership, such as Switzerland, Brazil, and Iran, while uh, Singapore is pulled away from Great Britain and has a new leader. The countries were moving to become more sovereign. Uh, we've got um, the BRICS Economic Alliance has seen its unilateral trade reach a notable new record as the U.S. dollar has taken another big hit. Specifically, two of the bloc's most prominent nations have been trade exchanges which surpassing 50 billion uh, for the first time in history, according to the Emirate News Agency. Uh, indeed, Russia and India have facilitated record bilateral trade relations with the figure reaching 17 and a half billion in the first quarter of the year. Subsequently, the nations have seen trade activity grow by more than 5% in local currency, with the move certainly affecting the prominence of the greenback on the international stage. Uh, let's see here, what else have I got? That's good enough for that. Now, the US is uh, gearing to go to, as we know, more instantaneous uh, transfers electronically. Uh, they are now getting set up on a T1 clearing on the 28th of this month. That's a fast time frame for clearing and settlement of bonds or stocks or currency transactions. Um, we've been on a T3 forever. Uh, and so that basically means we're going from uh, about three days, if you do a transaction or but a stock or whatever, it takes three days for it to clear. Uh, this is a lot of time. Uh, T1 will effectively be about six hours to do transactions around the world. And that's for everybody. It's my understanding that the U.S. is the last one to be at a T1 mark. And we are the largest market. Uh, Canada does not have a holiday like we do on Memorial Day. So they're actually going on the 27th. And of course, we know at the QFS, it's already mirroring SWIFT, and they're actually doing transactions in seconds. Uh, we know that the executive order 13303 was just resigned by the President of the United States. And when Sadani visited the U.S., he was assured that this would be signed, and it is good for another year. Uh, the Iraqi Parliament legislative process recess starts on the 9th of June. They had a 30-day extension. It was supposed to have happened on May 9th. Uh, the importance of this particular budget schedule is for projects and contracts to be paid. The expectation is that they will not be able to afford these at a rate of 1310, or they would have already done it. Um, 
So we had Sadani saying this week <clears throat> that they are starting the second phase of their economic reforms. And at the bottom of his article, he said that the, they were about to strengthen the dinar. Uh, strengthening the dinar is just adding more purchasing power and being stronger than the dollar. In order for it to be stronger than the dollar, it has to be worth more than the dollar. Uh, so um, we've got increased capacity in Iraq's refineries now. Um, they've got like 25 to 30 million dollars worth of gas per day. This is gas for, you know, cars, trucks, pumps. Uh, they're ready to be an exporter of the gas. And this is a new uh, area for Iraq and a key for their economy. And of course, Zimbabwe has also applied for their ISO code for the ZIG currency to be international. And that's pretty significant. Um, earlier this week, we thought that we were gonna have this thing going. Um, it was supposed to have gone at 5 a.m. Eastern last, uh, well, Monday the 20th. Uh, but uh, and then hopefully they were thinking on through the rest of this week, which didn't happen. Uh, the Iranian president's helicopter crash created days of mourning in different uh, Middle Eastern countries for different lengths of time. And uh, the same delay uh, was surrounding uh, in those countries. So Iraq uh, had one day of mourning on Tuesday. And uh, they have completed phase one of their banking now and are now entering phase two. Uh, which began uh, will begin on May 25th. Uh, the budget is passed and now, according to Sadani law and sent to Parliament, um, I, the Iranian rial was down a little bit this week. UN's trying to get protection for Taiwan from China. Uh, the latest is uh, that we might see something. Uh, I, I, I know there's different different opinions out there based on different facts, and and I'm not. I'm not contesting those. I'm just telling you what, what people on some ends are saying. Uh, maybe after the market closes today that uh, the market people and the traders have now um, been given the, uh, an alert. Uh, this is one of the first times I've ever had that. And a rate to look for over uh, the weekend. Uh, they're saying nothing will happen on Monday, but uh, would be back on again for Tuesday if it doesn't happen over the weekend. Uh, Sadani will beat the, uh, be at the World Economic Forum on the 28th and 29th, so he'll be out of the country in Iraq, and it would give him bragging rights if, if this thing was done uh, before he gets there. So uh, will that happen? I can't, I don't have my crystal ball, but uh, it would be logical. But then when did Iraq ever do anything that was logical? I don't know. <laughs> I know they have a lot of control from us that we don't, they don't admit to. Uh, and, and we know the codes were put in the servers in Houston uh, earlier this month. And so that, that was key. But that also lets you know that uh, they're not the only ones with their thumb on the button. <laughs> Indeed. Is that, was that everything, Rod, before I go forward? I'm good. <laughs> okay. Didn't, didn't want to interrupt. I want to make sure you got it all out. Um, okay. So let's break down a lot of that information that you shared for the audience a little bit, and we'll dissect it. So we know that in reality, Klaus Schwab, or as I call him, Laos Slob, the real one was taken out not too long ago. This is a narrative for the normies to see that, uh, that you know, things have, are breaking down from the deep state, right? So that's, that's one. Um, Number two, another interesting significant significant thing I saw happen this last week is that Iraq, I'm sure you're aware, uh, paid off all of their, quote, debts to the IMF, which is the, the deep state in and of itself. Somewhere between the tune of, I think, we can argue the, the numbers, I, I don't really care to do that, but I think it's somewhere between six and 20 billion, which sounds like a lot, but it's chump change for a country who is fourth in the Middle East with gold reserves and number, 20, uh, number 30 in the world with gold reserves, not too shabby, right? And <laughs> so shows you the power they have. Um, I believe that, Rod, that from what, what we've researched, that, that everything is signed and done with Iraq. It's already done. What they're waiting on is for Israel, who has now, as you've seen, they've hit Rafa, they've hit Hezbollah, they just hit Lebanon, right? And that's a separate thing. You saw Jeanine Planchette that we talked about, who's the UN uh, Foreign Relations Director, the, the go-between. She stepped down from that post. They haven't had a successor uh, and they're assigned her to Lebanon to deal with that situation. And she also wants this on her watch as bragging rights, right? Everybody wants to be 
you know, have their name associated with this historical event that's coming. Uh, but you see the ref you see the uh, payoff that happened. And uh, so wouldn't it suggest that we're waiting for Israel to hit the secret nuclear power plants of Iran, which will in turn free up the U.S. from, excuse me, will free up Iraq from the U.S. militias and the Iranian proxies that are currently residing in Iraq's government? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that would be huge. Uh, you think we're going to go ahead and go through with that? Absolutely. I mean, because Israel has already done their part with everything else. We're just waiting on that. And what's interesting, Rod, is because, you know, everything correlates it's not exactly related, but it is in the sense that XRP that we're waiting on for that, Judge Torres, she has already granted, you were talking about the QFS in relation to the SWIFT, the mirroring, that's why I bring it up. She's already given um, <clears throat> the banks her blessing or permission to integrate XRP into their new digital economic platform, which we knew was coming. So the only step that remains is for Israel to do their part, which will in turn free up Iraq, which will in turn free up the decision with XRP because everything is, you know, is scripted as we can, as you know, right? And then that begets the China-Taiwan situation, right? Because that's more for Vietnam, but that's going to have a dramatic effect. And they don't want to do that when Trump's back optically because he's powered up, he'll power up the military to a rate that would be untenable for, for them to even try to approach that. So it would seem to me that a lot is happening this summer, June, July, August, for a lot of these events to transpire. So I just want to get your take on that. Yeah, I mean, if I, the thing that irks me is, you know, we had that Israeli invasion, when was it, October 6th? Um, mm -hmm. and, and this thing was scheduled to go October 7th. It's the exact same thing that happens with 9-11 when the prosperity programs were scheduled to be announced the same day. Um, and, and then we've had other interruptions in between, um, but, just think, you know, if we hadn't had that interruption in Israel back in October, would you and I still be talking about them hitting their nuclear plants now? Uh, it, it, it's like, a, it's, it's like, you know, a deep state long range plan to stall this thing out indefinitely because that's the end of their, their game and they don't want to lose. Now they're going to lose. And I think they know they're going to lose, but they're, they're bleeding every last fiat dollar out they can get. Uh, until that final day happens. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the enemy always, when you corner them like a snake or a wounded animal, they're always going to fight till the end, but they are, they have already lost and they know it. This is just, we're seeing the final vestiges of their agenda, right? But then you also have, like you said, you know, we talked about Iraq paying off their quote unquote debts. Um, they've already signed the budget. They've gotten, everything is in place. There was uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about. I'm just going to read this to you from my phone. Um, the director of the World Trade Organization, I hope I'm saying this right, Micah Oshikawa, she made a social media post yesterday that can be found on X, I know you're on X, and Instagram, which stated that Iraq was progressing to ascending towards the WTO in July. So according to her, they will officially join in, in, in July. My question to you would be is, is the the reinstatement of the dinar hinging upon the WTO, or is that just a nice thing that has to happen in the process? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I think we can go without it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, Like you say, it would be a nice decoration, a, a, a calling card for Iraq uh, to brag about, have bragging rights. I, I think that's part of what this meeting uh, next week is all about. Um, whether or not we get get it now, like my people are saying, or we have to wait until summer, like other sources. Um, you know, we we don't have that crystal ball, but right. it's, it, we know we're in the ballpark. We we have made it into the stadium, and the game is about to begin. <laughs> yeah, I I agree with that. I think I think we're I think we're looking at, and again, not doing dates or rates or anything like that. Just looking at time frames based on what we see transacting that we've discussed. I think June, July, August is pretty exciting, especially you brought up Zimbabwe. They have their elections in August. So that's, you know, they've already tucked in the, uh, the gold backed dollars under the zig right in, in country. And now the bonds will be conjoined once Chamisa becomes president over there, like Trump here optically, it's pretty inevitable. Uh, you can see though, the just kind of careening towards the end of that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that we're, we're definitely, in a place where it's 
building critical mass. It's uh, it's exciting time if you can see it correctly. Yeah, I, I just hate to see so many people suffering between now and the time we get there. Um, I, I get Agreed. messages from folks almost daily, you know, that uh, right. says they're just hanging on by a thread. And um, yeah. there, there's so so little I can do to comfort them. <laughs> I get those I get those comments as well, and I agree with you. But we have to ultimately, as Christians, trust God's timing is better than ours. And and if you know if it didn't happen yet, we're being protected from something we can't yet see. To your point, going back a second about you know the Israeli strike last year and what we're going to see this year, you could say make the same argument that with Maliki, which we know is a Obama slash Sortera holdover from the previous corrupt administrations, that he was brought in to stop and mess with everything. But if he didn't do what he did, we're not having this conversation today. He would have, if, if it went the way people thought it was supposed to, this reset would have happened, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, right? And a lot of people would have been cut out from this opportunity altogether. So I believe like you do that God takes what is meant for harm to use it for our good, for the bigger scheme of things. We just don't see it in the immediate. Yeah, I actually do have people that have, have come into this rather recently I, by rather recently i mean within the last year or two but i've literally had some that have been this year and right. and they've only literally a few weeks and and when i consult with them it's like wow you know your perspective and my perspective are like <laughs> a mile apart and so i have to try to recalibrate and and bring that into where they're at as opposed to where i'm at <laughs> yeah absolutely and, and, you know, God knows when we're ready for it versus what we think we want and we're ready for. He knows when we're mentally able to handle the timing of this. This is not a, you know, $50,000 wealth transfer. This is, you know, monumental, multi-millennial generation. This is, goes back to Joseph, right? We, we will never see this again. So we have to put it in the, the proper perspective. And, you know, we look at how long it took them to the deep state to build up this corrupt system against us and how it's being decimated in a matter of, you know, years in comparison to how long it took to, to build up to this point. Yeah, that's so, true. Proper perspective to your point is key. Um, so let me say, I'm trying to think if there's anything, uh, anything else I can ask you, but um, so, so we're just waiting on Israel. Is, is there anything else you see that you think needs to be done or you think everything's kind of in place at this point? I, I think it's been decided for a while. We're just watching it play out on the on the stage at this point. Uh, sure. I think all the players know the end game in advance, and and they're playing their roles. Uh, I I hate that movie comparison, but you know the fact is that's kind of how it's playing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I no, wish I it weren't. I I was in you know like you said, I had no idea of currency revaluations back in the nineties. Uh, I was kind of a guru when it came to the prosperity programs and was doing international shows on that. Um, so that was 25 years ago that that began. Uh, my, my first, when I put my children in the prosperity programs themselves, uh, one was two, the other one was four months old. Uh, today, wow. one is 28, the other one is 26 with fraternal twin three-year-olds of her own. Oh. So that's how much time has passed since since we've gotten started on this. <laughs> but now you get to help. Now you get to help not only your children but your grandchildren and leaving that 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 uh, legacy for them. So, so there's the whole. Thing. Well, Rod, thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, any last words you have for the audience, and where can people find your work? Yeah, I, I stay hidden out over on X, which was Twitter for those that haven't quite made the transition. Uh, the address is just Patriot Rod Steele, S-T-E-E-L, no E on the end. Uh, don't get mixed up with clones, pictures, and, and headers and banners that look exactly like mine and even have my same articles on them. Uh, they are there to divert you. And I have had that happen, sadly, a couple of times with people who thought they were doing business with me and were actually just giving it to some nefarious person. But... Um, the point of the matter is we are going full steam ahead with our consultations regarding these redemption appointments. Um, it's, it's a fantastic 30 to 40 minutes we spend. I've, I've actually had people come to me that said that they 
were involved with other people they had, you know, contributed to, and they got 10 times the information from me that they got from them, and they paid them more than they did me. And so uh, we, we cover every aspect of being prepared for the, for the banking appointment in advance, um, what to have in hand when you go, what to negotiate, how to negotiate each and every step of each and every currency. Um, we go through every detail of what to ask the bank for as, as guarding um, accounts and, and what kind of rates to ask for investments within those options and future opportunities after the fact that I will connect people with. Uh, so please go there. Just let me know that I don't need a long dissertation. I don't need a history. I just need a DM to me at Patriot Rod Steele that says, interested in consultation. That's all I want. And then I will send you the proper information. If you want to make that choice, then we will get you scheduled and, and go forward from that point. And I am open next week. I'm all caught up now. I'm going to the Indy 500 this weekend. I will be gone through Tuesday. So I won't be able to schedule any appointments until probably late Wednesday afternoon and the rest of the week. But uh, go ahead and, and get started on that. And I will respond to that and get back to you. And, and we'll get rolling on this, hopefully, uh, before, before you need it. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Rod. And, and is there any other place that they can reach you? Because sometimes I have people text me that they have a hard time getting a hold of you or they've had a delay. Uh, if they've had a delay, it's because either there were hidden pages that I didn't see of people trying that I didn't know I was supposed to be responding to, or um, I'm just behind. You know, I am one person and, and I've dealt with, you know, a few hundred of you guys. So please bear with me. There's a few hundred of you and there's one of me. Uh, <laughs> I, I do the best I can. And, and I will, I will, I, but I said, I'm, I'm caught up now. So we should be all right. Cool. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. And folks, again, if uh, you are looking to get currencies like the dinar, um, we have a good vendor that we work with and we'll leave that link in the description. Uh, as things are building up to the tempest for the uh, the landing that's coming in here that we've all been anticipating. Rod Steele, thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again soon and have a, a somber and blessed uh, Memorial Day holiday. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to be in the owner's suite uh, at uh, turn one at the Indy 500 uh, this weekend. One of, one of our wonderful um, listeners was kind enough to make that opportunity available to me. So Grateful to all the wonderful people we have out there in Denarland. Absolutely. Have a blessed day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.